Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Eat Chocolate. Uh, I have a, a, a viewer named Anton, who is from Finland, who sent me an enormous amount of chocolate. I'll see if I can pick some of this stuff up here. I'll probably make a disaster of a mess. This is, isn't even all of it. I'll probably just smash some of the chocolate over here. Ah, that's okay. Um, who sent me an enormous amount of Finnish chocolate, which is uh, pretty... Pretty amazing. I, I opened this box and I was like, or these boxes, two boxes. Uh, this guy shipped at a uh, relatively considerable expense, I gotta say. And just like opened just box after box after box of chocolate inside of there. And I thought, you know what? Let's do one of these uh, these sort of tasting videos um, because I think that's very, very, very appropriate for this sort of thing. So um, as far as I know, they are all they are all finished. Um, they are primarily from one company um, called uh, Phaser. Phaser. Uh, you get, oh, it's kind of shiny, so it's hard to see, but this Phaser brand. And then, so this is one example. This is the Carl Phaser. They don't all say Carl Phaser, do they? Well, I guess this one does, so that must be the actual company name. Um, but like this one here is Phaser, but I guess it's, I don't know. I don't know how it's organized, but it's a lot of those. Um, then I've got. A couple of these things here, Cloeta something, Cloeta Sprinkle. Actually, I got three of these. One of them appears to be black licorice and raspberry, and I'm not going to be having on stream here, and I'll tell you why. Because black licorice and raspberry are two of my mother's favorite things, and um, so I've decided I'm going to save that. I'm going to bring that for um, for the family Christmas when I go see my parents for Christmas. Is I'm going to bring that and then we're going to open it there. So that's going to be one of the chocolates we're not going to open up. And of course, if we're going to have chocolate, I mean, in honor of the uh, chocolate and whiskey fund, which many, many, many people have contributed to on Twitch, and thank you very much for that. I'm going to have a little whiskey as a palate cleanser. This is um, uh, an Ockentoshan. It's a 12-year-old single malt whiskey. Um, Single malt basically just means that it's made from effectively just like one batch of 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 grain, um, more or less, and is aged in one thing. Uh, whereas a blended Scotch whiskey uh, would be made from a, a variety of different whiskeys, sort of blended together. The advantage of a blended whiskey is that uh, it can be a little less expensive, of course, because um, they can also include other things that aren't sort of like malted in the same sort of style, which uh, brings down the price a lot. Uh, the consistency is a lot easier to work with, so it's less uh, worrisome. But it does give you a more consistent flavor. Sing uh, blended, uh, blended malts are not necessarily bad, um, but they can sometimes be less interesting. So with a single malt... Um, Different single malt whiskeys, even from the same area of, of say, Scotland, if they're Scotch, it will taste very, very different because of slight differences in the exact herb and the exact method they use. So, uh, so there you go. So the Ockentoshan is a relatively mild whiskey. Uh, a lot of times I go for a lot of the Islay ones, which are very smoky, very peaty, um, and they can vary a lot in strength. But today I think that'll be very, very nice uh, to go with some of these chocolates. Now, I have opened one already, which is, oh, which is the first one that I held up. The Carl Faser Raspberry Yogurt in Milk Chocolate. So here's one of the things that's interesting about chocolate between North America and Europe. If, like me, you're a bit of a chocolate snob in North America, you will say something like, I mean, I, I only eat dark chocolate. I mean, our, dark chocolate is the only real chocolate there is. Milk chocolate, ah, that's for, you know, that's for lesser people. You know, if you're a chocolate snob, like me. Um, you might say something like that. And it's funny because I've heard a lot of people say, no, I really, I, 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 what are you talking about? Milk chocolate is really good. It's so much silkier and tastier. Why wouldn't you like milk chocolate? Um, why do you say it's not as good as dark chocolate? I mean, sometimes those are people in North America who are like, you know, whatever, and clearly have no palate. But a lot of those people are uh, European people saying that. And the thing is, there's a big difference between a lot of milk chocolate in Europe and a lot of milk chocolate in North America in that the milk chocolate in North America is almost kind of not chocolate. It's kind of, I say white chocolate's not chocolate. White chocolate is the leftover after you, you take the cocoa out of stuff that's sort of, and then you have taste left over. That's sort of what white chocolate is. Anyway, a lot of milk chocolate in North America is basically that cocoa paste just like sort of dyed brown with a little bit of cocoa added back in. It doesn't have the same flavor. So when you get a chance to get European milk chocolate, it is really a proper treat. 
um, and stands up on its own, even as someone who prefers like really intense flavors. Like, so I like dark chocolate, I like olives, I like, you know, Islay whiskeys, which some of them taste like you have a campfire in your mouth. Uh, so intense flavors, but there's something special about a lot of European chocolate. So anyway, without further ado, we are five minutes into the video and haven't eaten a single chocolate yet. So this is the one I've already tried, the raspberry yogurt. Here's the thing, and I'm still not gonna eat the chocolate. There's this thing that people like to do. People love to combine raspberries and chocolate and um, orange and chocolate. And especially in Europe, and I see that uh, the orange and chocolate thing is very big inside the UK. And I can't stand it most of the time. I don't think it's a very good flavor combination at all. I don't understand. And I think a lot of times it's poorly executed. This, however, and this is the reason I first tried it, because I saw it and I thought, I bet you I'm gonna like this. And yeah, it's, just, it's not just like, you know, raspberries combined with chocolate it's got this like cream inside and it's like the yogurt is in the cream so it softens it. it's not quite as tart mmm oh, delicious it's got well no you can't see it's got a little flex of the red raspberry and every now and a little pop mmm it's more of like a a floral thing than anything else really good mm-hmm <laughs> Of that. It's amazing on the back of the box here. There's ingredients and whatever in like six different languages. Mm, pretty amazing. Mm, all right. These guys, nine out of ten. Ten out of ten with rice. Reddit references, anyone? No? It's not the most prevalent one. All right. Mm, oh, good. Oh my god. I'm currently on a low carb diet. I, um, I used to be really fat. And then I lost a ton of weight and got really, really skinny. And I was doing like all kinds of running and things like that. Um, and kept it off for like five years. Ever since I started doing the YouTube thing full time, started putting on some weight again. And I finally like, okay, I gotta get back on this. And so I do this sort of keto, sort of low carb, low sugar thing, which works out good for me. I'm not saying it's like a magic bullet for anyone, but my problem is it's like, I can't just have one chip. I can't even just have one bag of chips. If I finish a bag of potato chips, then I want another one. Then I want ice cream. Then I want this, then I want this. So it's better to just cut this out. So this is like playing with fire here. But as a result also, sweet things taste super sweet. Mmm. But it's more working out. Down 12 pounds in November, so good stuff. Shoom! A um, couple more months, I'll be exactly where I want to be. So the next thing we're going to do, actually, since, okay, I said, Raspberry and chocolate, not usually a combo I go for, but in this case, that really worked. So I'm gonna go for something else that is not only something I go for, which is hazelnut. So it, we're gonna go for these, ooh, that is really bright and hard to see. Let me angle it away from the light, maybe. Geisha! I don't have any idea how it, what it has to do with like Japanese hospitality or anything like that, but um, milk chocolate with soft hazelnut filling. So I'm not a fan of hazelnut for some reason, and I'm often not a fan of nuts with chocolate in general, also. Um, a lot of it is a texture thing, like I really hate ice cream with nuts in there too, because it's like, you're enjoying this nice soft ice cream and all of a sudden you've got these like shards of death inside the ice cream, it just ruins the entire mouthfeel. Chocolate chips and ice cream are also a big fail, because they freeze so hard that they tend to be hard. Little chocolate flakes, now that's okay. Um, and in specific, hazelnut is not a flavor I care for, but I like Nutella which is very prevalent in a lot of uh, European countries, especially continental stuff. Like, um, I don't think I've been to a single hotel in continental Europe that for breakfast didn't have like, you know, a bunch of breads and then a bunch of Nutella available to spread on those breads, whatever you want. Um, and I like this and I suspect that this will be the right combination as well. So let's give that a try. For me, it is hitting those hazelnut notes that I don't personally care for. I think for most people, this would be one of the most glorious chocolates there are. Because most people really like those flavors. Now luckily, I got three other people in the house. And in particular, Essentia is a big fan, Essentia, my wife, is a big fan of hazelnut chocolates. So I suspect that box will not last very long. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Actually, it's not bad. You know what it is? It's kind of like um, it's like kind of like coffee or coffee flavored desserts, especially when you're young, they taste terrible. Even when you're older, if you haven't been exposed to very many, they taste kind of terrible. 
quite like an eyelash scotch, but then once your palate sort of adjusts to it, it's pretty good, actually. Nice texture in there. Mmm. Do Finnish people say skull? I don't know. I don't know. I know the Scandinavian countries do. And you're right next door. There's a shared history. I have no idea what the proper Finnish, like, you know, cheer is. Um, what am I going to open next? I could go very different. These guys are apparently a whole nother thing. And at first when I got them, I thought they were, uh, what do you call it? The Salmiaki? Oh my god, I have a Salmiaki liqueur. That's what I should be drinking right now. It's from Finland. Salmiaki, I don't know how you pronounce it, is um, a super salty licorice. It's, and it's not like regular salt. It's a different type of salt. Um, it's really intense, and I love it. I absolutely love it. You put it in your mouth, though, and you're pretty sure you're about to die. You're pretty sure you just put the worst thing in the universe in your mouth, and then all of a sudden, it's like after a couple seconds, it's like it mellows out, and you're like, oh, that's good. Really, really like it. So that's what I assumed this was. But, like, it literally has a graph on the back that says too hot to handle. And again, I thought it was... So I think these are legitimately, like, spicy candies. So I think we'll save that for last, just because I think the palette thing is going to be a little different. I love spicy stuff, though. Um, and spice is definitely one of those things you build up to. Like, literally, and this is not it's like a showing off thing. It's just like a normal thing that happens if you do a lot of spicy food. Like, if I got like a Frank's Red Hot, which admittedly is not, you know, it's not supposed to be that hot. But I can just drink it. Mostly just tastes like vinegar and salt to me. Um, very little heat whatsoever. And I, I buy a lot of really specialty hot sauces that are really intensely hot. You know, when you get these tiny little bottles and there's like $15, $20 for one of these little guys and you use like one drop in your cooking because it's like insane. Um, I really, really like spicy food, so we're going to save that up. You'll probably see me sweat, actually. I like it. It still makes me sweat. All right, next thing uh, I've got here. Um, this has also been opened by Sencha. Is Laka... And then I should change the, uh, you know what, let me turn this light off. There we go, that's better. Laka, and then it's got Licuriconvitaja. Cloudberry liqueur filled chocolates over here. And Essentia really liked these. Mm -hmm. She was curious about the cloudberry in particular. Cloudberries look like they're something sort of related to like raspberries maybe, but a little bit more golden and orangey. I don't know if they are or not. They're clearly druplets though. All right, let's try one of these. I've been warned that I have to be careful with this because this is a liquidy liqueur kind of thing, as opposed to a, um, as opposed to like a mousse. So, hold on, I brought a smart, I've got a paper towel, so I'm gonna put it down on my desk just in case I make a mess, but I will try to just bite into it instead of popping it into my mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's unusual. Mm -mm. It's like going over, but... <laughs> it's got like... It's got like a sugar layer on the inside of the chocolate. Like, there's like a candied sugared... shell on the inside of the thin, 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 thin chocolate. And then sticky, sticky liqueur that I've got all in my fingers here. I should have just popped it all in my mouth. But I was gonna try to show it. Oh, I really should have. Wow, my sticky. Um, I've never had anything like that in my life. Yeah, it's got like so it's thin chocolate with literally like a crystallized sugar shell just on the inside, and that's really what gives it the shape and the liqueur on the inside. Weird and awesome. That would be good. You pop it in your mouth and just like smoosh it and just have it shatter, like an like an egg or something. That's good. The cloudberry stuff is good, but the, um, the whole texture. Is that a common thing? I've never had a chocolate like that. I've never had a confection or a candy with that sort of, like, sugar shell on the inside. I'm going to go into sugar shock here in a second. Oh, my God. That is already more sugar than I probably had all week put together. Um, all right. Oh, that sounds good. So these Julia's, they are super... Gla on ve teja juisa rekas marmelade. Anyway, um, chocolate with fresh jelly filling. Now, is it going to be jelly like um, we have something here 
we call a Big Turk, which is supposed to be like a Turkish delight covered in chocolate. I've had actual Turkish delight. It's nothing like it. But yeah, it's a jelly, like like a jello, but like, you know, really dense, covered in chocolate, which is very nice, like a jujube or something like that, or a Swedish fish, right? Swedish fish, Swedish berries. I don't know if they were actually Swedish or not. But I don't know if it's going to be like that or more like a like a jam or jelly, the sort of thing you'd spread on toast. Just trying to try take a bite. Oh, yeah. It's a firm... Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Um, I love Big Turks and things like that. Like jelly covered in chocolate. I love that. That is so me. One of my favorite things. I'm a Sentra will not touch these because she hates that sort of thing. So these are all mine. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay. All right, 10 out of 10. Mmm. All right, Finland, you're doing really well. This Phaser company, listen, guys, if Phaser is watching and they want me to shill for their stuff, just send more boxes. That's all I care about. All right. We're going to try um, a milk and white chocolate box next. I don't think this is filled with anything. I think it's just simple chocolate. Mm -hmm. But probably done right. Also, I love the fact that these are all individually wrapped because it's like a good source of portion control for me. So yeah, just milk and white chocolate. I'm confused. Like... All the ingredients and stuff in the back. Well, no, that's not true. The English is coming first. They're not all like that, though. I guess it depends. So on this one, and for example, this one, the English comes first, and that includes on the back. It says, you know, the Carl Fazer signature, yada, 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 yada. Although it does say it's been made in Helsinki, Finland. But some of these others are just like, all in what I assume is Finnish. Or maybe just, you know, someone typing randomly on the keyboard. I literally couldn't tell the difference. So, I don't know, maybe they're for different markets? Anyway, let's try this. Very lovely. Two levels. Mmm, just simple chocolate. Mmm. But very good. This would be excellent with coffee. Like a nice strong coffee. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Also, you know what I'd be good with? Mmm. Oh. Wow, that's really good. Really nice chocolate. Um. So I've got another one that looks like solid chocolate. I'm gonna set it aside for now, we'll come back to it. We have a mystery one. Because I literally can't read what it is. Da capo. Sucro, we've seen that word before. Curo rute tua conventeja. Or, and I assume, I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing the bottom one is just in another language. So maybe the first one is Finnish, and the second one is like Swedish or something? I don't know. Maybe it's all Finnish. Chocolado ver dragon confect. I'm assuming that because of the, the last word. I'm assuming the first version is the uh, the Finnish version of confectionery, and the second one is the Swedish version of confectionery? I have no idea. I should probably Google this shit, but you know. It's like Googling how to pronounce shit. That's never gonna happen, guys. <clears throat> I'm also Googling about this thing called Belgium people keep telling me about. By the way, if anyone from Belgium wants to sell me chocolate, send me chocolate, I might stop making fun of your country. Or I'll make fun of it more. Whichever you want, just tell me. Send me chocolate. I just dumped this entire box. Hold on. I swear that's my first drop, uh, drink of the day. I'm just very excited about chocolate. And then I dropped another one somewhere. That I was planning on eating, except I can't find it. All right, take another one out of the box. By the way, this this um, shirt is a Crusader Kings two shirt. 
You guys can pause that. Rewind and pause. God damn it, stop dropping stuff. All right. Mystery one, da capo. Which, I don't know, is Italian for the, the captain? Hmm. It's just got like, like a chocolate mousse or nougaty kind of thing in the middle or fudge. I don't know what you call it. Mmm. You know, like a Mars bar, right? That sort of thing. It's super good. It's just, so I like that because it's just sort of chocolatey, but with a lot of like extra texture. You know, it sort of makes it up. It's not just a block of thing. And when you get these sort of foamy things, almost like um, Three Musketeer, maybe? I might be thinking the wrong chocolate bar, so I don't know. But that structure melts quicker on your mouth, which gives it extra flavor. When something melts like that, it's just like cutting uh, cheese very thin using one of the special Nordic cheese knives, of course. Um, you cut the cheese really, really thin, and you put it on your mouth, and just enough to, like, release more of the flavors that way. So... Mmm. That is dangerously good. Dangerously good. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to go into a diabetic shock. All right. <clears throat> Next one up is... A very, it's a different looking box that can open a different way, but strawberry crisps. Not just like strawberry, strawberry crisps. What does that mean? I don't know. Different looking box and it's got like sort of a tab here and then also this thing at the bottom. Oh, oh, it's like a tray. It's got a picture. Oh, fins too advanced for me. So I pull out this tab and then it's supposed to slide out sideways. Is it? Oh, this way. Hold on. Is it? Wow. Oh, and then the top opens up. I don't think they got. I don't know if they got that pictured. No, but you can slide it back inside. So I can. Looks like I can pop the top right here. Oh yeah, opens very well. So then, we've got the open top, easier to share, and then you can slide it back in the box. All right, and try a strawberry crisp. I'm gonna set one aside, and I'm gonna slide this back in the box. Perfect. Okay, it's a different shape. It's one of these, a little reminiscent of a Rolo, but a bit bigger. Uh, not necessarily taller, but certainly wider around there. At the base, it's about the size of a quarter. Um, and I can see just a little texturing in the bottom. So I'm definitely getting the, uh, the sense of the crisp, maybe. Let's try. I'm thinking it might have been like a, almost like a freeze-dried strawberry, pulverized into little bits and put in there, maybe with like a little bit of rice or something for texture. And it's really good. Not very strawberry, but a great texture, which I like. I would like chocolates, you know, you can get, especially at Easter, I don't know, at least here in Canada. Um, oh, there's the other chocolate. I've been sitting on it. Excellent. So it's nice and melty. Good. Um, you could get the Easter bunnies with the, like puffed rice inside, Rice Krispies type thing inside. I like those. I like the raspberry thing. It's less about tasting the strawberry and more about getting the sort of floral fruity notes as an aftertaste. It's very good. Hold on. How to cheers in Finnish. Kippis. Really? Kippis? Kippis. Or, um, oh, actually, actually, I always forget how to, um, 
how to pronounce it, the Scottish one, Slante, is sort of how it's spelled, but it's not quite pronounced that way. So that would be the combination, right? Slante, Slanche, something like that. Cheers. Okay. Mm. I've really, really been looking forward to opening these bad boys over here. And these are the ones I told Essentia she wasn't allowed to open because I actually wanted to open the package um, on screen. The rest she could open. She only opened a couple. She's not very adventurous. Or, no. She's not very greedy is what I actually meant. Like, that's the sense I mean it in. She was like, well, no, no, I feel bad. I'm like, no, open them. Eat them. Now that they're all open, she's going to be really happy. Okay, so this one here, I'm opening without explaining. Mint and... Oh. oh, I can already smell it. Mint and crispy rain. First of all, it looks adorable. I don't know the rain part of it, but two things. I already talked about the texture thing and how I like the crispy stuff. Crispy. There it is. Crispy. Very good. But mint chocolate. Oh, oh I don't know if like... um. Like, after eights are one of my favorite things. I don't know if that's something everywhere in the world has. I know it's not, like, specifically Canadian. I think it might be from a British company? After eight, mint chocolate thins are a confectionery product intended to be used after dinner mints, created in 1962 uh, by Roan Tree and Company Limited. Since the 88 acquisition of the United Kingdom-based company, the mints have been manufactured by Nestle. No, oh, okay. But anyway, I've grown up with af uh, with After Eights my entire life. So I guess they're originally British, but they've been in my life in Canada my entire life, right? And this has got, yeah, if you ever smell a box of After Eights, this is exactly what it smells like. Well, not exactly. They might be using a slightly different kind of mint, which is possible, but it's so there. All right. So I did drop it earlier, so I've got a nice convenient little bite. Like, this is a giant bar. So I got that out of it. Okay, little squares, nice texturing on the back. I can tell I'm gonna like that very much. I'm break off just one square because I've already blown my diet to hell. Not even a full square. Me being responsible. I think they're by a different company. Mm. Oh, it's good. This is more minty than an after eight. And maybe a little bit more like pemperminty? Yeah, this is a different company. Well, I guess there's that Cloetta thing. Right? Cloetta, they got it up front. Right there. I didn't know if that was like, you know, the, the type or the brand. But I think it's the brand. This is made in Turku, Finland. Where's Colossal Order? Are they not in Turku? Turku? No, they're in Tampere. Never mind. I thought I was going to be all smart and cool there. Um, this is way more intensely minty. It's a little bit like... Oh, you know what? Now I understand why they got a candy cane on the picture. Right? Over there? It is a lot like the kind of mint that you get in a candy cane. So it's like if you're crunching into a candy cane and just crunch, 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 and getting that kind of mint, that's the kind of stuff it is. Very intense. Um, you would not want to eat this too quickly, I think. Absolutely delicious, though. And again, that, that Rice crispy kind of texture. Yeah, that's me. Now, this is going to be amazing. First of all, waffle, obviously, you know, pretty strong. You can get that texture thing. Doesn't have the same, it may not have the same type of crispiness that the puffed rice would, but it's still going to be a bit of a texture thing, which is nice. It's funny, given that I don't like nuts in my chocolate, right? Because I don't like the texture. This, I like. It's not that I don't like stuff. It's, it's got to be stuff that's not quite too, I don't know, disturbing to chew on. It's got to have some give, which this has. And salted caramel is such a fantastic flavor. So looking forward to that. And this is one of the ones that Essentia is one of the most excited about because salted caramel is her go-to flavor. For so many things. For so many things. So, break off just one square over here. All right, so again, you can sort of see the texture on the bottom, but you can tell it's a different kind of texture. Mm. 
Oh my god. Okay, so you get an ice cream cone with a waffle cone, and you eat the waffle cone, this is exactly what it tastes like. Plus a little more caramelly um, and sweet. Not quite as salty as some salty caramel things I've got, but it's like, it's like if someone had figured out how to take a waffle cone and turn it into a chocolate bar. That's what this is. Which is gonna make Accenture insanely happy. Mm. Oh, that's good. Well, it's really good. Wow. This video is going to be Quillotine Eats Chocolate for 30 minutes. Kind of accurate. Mmm. 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 Alright. This is the last of the boxes. After this, we've only got that Turkish beber? Pepper? Oh, it's probably the Turkish pepper. Pepper, but in Finnish. I have that if it just means fire. We'll see how it goes. So this is the Back to Carl Faison. Milk chocolate made with fresh milk. I mean, I guess it's not fresh anymore, but... Mmm, okay. So I think this is going to be solid milk chocolate, but it's going to be the right kind of milk chocolate. Mm-hmm. Solid all the way through. Nicely tempered on the outside. Just smooth, smooth milk chocolate. Exactly what it's supposed to be. Smooth. Not too sweet, though. Mm-hmm. A little bit of that sort of natural nuttiness that you get with something that's got a little bit more of the uh, sort of cocoa butter or cocoa mass as opposed to just cocoa powder or, you know, cocoa oil or liqueur. Ingredients. Milk, sugar, cocoa butter. See? Cocoa mass, emulsifier, less the thin. Salt and flavored. With that cocoa butter that I keep talking about. I gotta admit, it's not literally the greatest milk chocolate, pure milk chocolate I've ever had. Although it's a hell of a lot better than most of the stuff that you get in North America that calls itself milk chocolate. Which is just sort of like brown thing. Not the same. Alright. Let's get all the chocolate out of my palate. And then we're going to open up what I assume is called Turkish pepper. I should use Google language tool. Google Translate. Um, so, source language, Finnish, P-E-B-E-R, to English, nothing. It's offering to translate from Danish instead. Okay, well, when it, when Google is translating from Danish to English, it's saying that this is, that Bepper, or no, Pepper, 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 is Pepper. And on the too hot this handle scale, this is the hottest. My mouth still tastes a bit of chocolate. Hold on. A little late in the evening to be having a Coke, but I want to get this chocolate out of my mouth first, get a proper experience. All right, that ought to do it. Nice and acid. Can't open it. That is the question. Oh, yeah, very easily actually. It just tears over there. I was trying to sort of open it more like a bag of chips, you know, pop it in the side. Okay, it smells like black licorice. These are black licorice candy. Now, are they spicy, spicy, or is this salted licorice? It's a little weird not to be able to prepare. I think this is actually going to be a salted licorice, based on the texture. What is this? Well, the Great British ingredients say pepper candies. Ingredients. Sugar, glucose syrup, ammonium chloride. So, it's salted licorice. Licorice extract, salt, flavorings, vegetable oil. Okay. So it's a salted licorice. I have to say, this 
despite its three heat things, is actually one of the more mild sulfate licorices that I've had. On the other hand, it's the only time I've had it in a hard candy form. It's not as um, black licorice -y. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Usually, when you have salted black licorice, it's got the salt on the outside. I mean, as soon as it sort of dissolves, you mostly just have the black licorice. This has got it all the way through, I think. It's got a little light powdery on the outside, but it keeps going. As it melts in your mouth, it keeps going with the salt, which actually does make it a lot more intense. And I think spicy. Trying to dissolve it. Yeah, so when it says flavorings, there's spice in here. It's a salted black licorice thing with chilies inside. This might just be my favorite thing ever. So, per 100 grams, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> per 100 grams, there's 364 calories. One of these, I'll have to weigh it, use a food scale for everything, it's probably something around six grams or so. Which probably means it has about four carbs. It's per 100 grams, oh no, more than that. Because per 100 grams it has 90, 89 carbs. It's almost entirely carbs and sugar. So I'm gonna have to keep track of that. This is cool. I mean, it's hot. It's hot. But it's really cool. I'm willing to bet this would kill most people. And here's the thing. Northern people, no matter where you are in the world, northern people do not tend to do spicy food. Spicy food tends to be a reaction to being in a hot place where before, you know, the ability to store food for a long time, meat and stuff would rot relatively quickly. So you would hit it with a ton of spice to cover up the flavor of the rotting meat. When you're living in the north, Canada, Finland, these sorts of things, things just freeze, right? Uh, so the problem doesn't tend to be um, that, that type of preservation. Preservation of fresh food, fresh vegetables, for example, a problem, but fresh meat, a little less so. So this sort of thing is probably really intense to a lot of people. I think I have only been saved a great deal of hardship by the fact that my palate is very adjusted to spicy food. Yeah, this is spicy. I don't think I'm just imagining it. Other than that, it's a weird reaction to the continued source of the salt. And certainly the saltiness is throughout. You know what I'm worried about? Here's the thing. When you're used to eating spicy food, and then you go on a diet, so you get sort of just generally speaking less food, um, and especially when you're going on a low carb diet where you're not getting like all the sort of just bread and just sort of bulk stuff, Spicy food hits you in a different way, a lot more substantially, just because there's a bit less padding going on. I might feel this a bit more tomorrow. But right now, I like it. Anyway, that is um, Quilly Teen. Eats finished candies, mostly chocolate, all chocolate, plus one candy. Really good. Um, Finland obviously knows what they're doing with sweets. Um, especially, I guess there's one company and then I really liked, I really like these, oops, these, because again, the texture thing, but this in particular, I've never had anything like this, and this will stand out. The only problem with this is essential will eat it all, I'll never get another piece again, um, which is a damn shame, because it's really good, but you know, that's the price. This is how I, uh, I bribe her to keep moderating for us, is that every now and again, we get her some treats. So thank you very much, Anton, for sending me that. Also, if anyone else was interested in, you know, sending me sweet things to eat, I'll put my PO box information down below. Um, send me crap, and maybe I'll eat it on screen, because that's a good time. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Bye-bye.